Okay, let's move on to the last part of the chapter. What we're doing here is to capture the variances in journal transactions. Okay, so journal transactions is back. Do you still remember some of them? Yeah. Can you tell me what is the first one? Without looking at the arrow one, could you tell me from the first line and the third line what that transaction is about? We see materials as the debit side, which means is purchasing. We have an increased level of materials, so we received materials asset increase, that's from acquisition transactions. Right, so remember the very last line, in case you forget what each journal entry is about, the very last line is basically explaining what the entry is. It's a memo. Right? So it tells you to record purchase of direct materials. So we have increased materials we debited, credit side accounts payable, usually large businesses will defer some of the payments to later. So what is the middle part here? So what we learn in this course is all about differences between budget and actual. This here is capturing the differences between budgeted and actual price of purchasing materials. Right, so you see that I highlighted in red this SP there, standard price, meaning originally the company was budgeting for $2. That's already captured in their budgeted statement. When it comes to actually purchasing the material, they notice that they only used $1.90. Right, so remember transaction is only captured whenever it actually happens, as it happens. We record these transactions. So standard price is already captured somewhere a few months ago in the budgeted system. We want to show here that there are differences between what we originally planned and what actually happened. So what actually happened is $1.90 for each square feet of materials. So we use 12,000 square feet. So the actual amount we paid is only 22,800. But we budgeted earlier as $2. So we have a differences here at, we call it direct material price variance. OK? So what this is showing is that if a company is using standard costing system, they do budgeting. For most cases, large businesses, they do. Managers, when they look at these transactions, they can easily capture which are the ones that has variances in material category and labor category and other manufacturing overhead. Okay, so if there is no differences, then basically we don't have that middle part, direct materials price variance. But in case there is, then for the differences in total, 2,400 compared to 22,800, 22, we actually spent more or less than what we expected. We spent less, right? The standard price is 24,000. We only spent, we paid out 22,800. So you see that variance account, think of that as an expense account. So if we actually do have expense, we want, we spent more than we budgeted, it will be on the debit side. In this case, we spend less than we expected, we consider this as a contra expense side. So we will be crediting it. So that 1200 basically we didn't pay. Accounts payable is the actual money that we paid. Right, what it, what it does, the price variances is basically a contra expense. So whatever materials later on was used, the actual expense cost of goods sold will be less. We're still capturing the actual amount that we used. Okay, so again, the upper part, materials inventory captures the original standard price. Accounts payable is really what we paid out, what's on the paper, on the confirmed receipt, right? So the difference is here called the direct materials price variance. Since it's less than what we expected, it's a contra expense concept here. We will record that 1200 here. Okay, we will have a separate account for each and every one of them. I just put them all together because the direction is the same for each category. Opposite of expense. So expense is spending more. Whenever you record something here, you're giving money out to somebody. Contra expense, you had saving, basically. Think of it as saving. Because we thought we would be paying 24000 but we didn't. So we want to capture that 1200 as less than budget. Okay? So think of contra expense as less than budget. 
positive thing. Yes, whenever you see these variance accounts as the credit side is a positive. Okay? So as opposed to that, what we see here, can you explain what this is? Second entry. First, we purchased material. What did we do second? We under budgeted, and what is this category specifically on? Using materials, right? So remember that earlier in the first three chapters, we purchased the materials, and then when we start using it, it turns into work in process. Labor also turns into work in process. Manufacturing overhead turns into work in process. So work in process will be debited whenever we start the production cycle. When we don't start it, we just purchase it, it's just the upper entry. Once we start producing it, using a portion, acquisition department sends over the materials to the production department, then we start recording the price of that. Okay, so here we have 10,000 square feet as the standard quantity that was supposedly we will be using this. But in reality, the materials inventory that was sent over to the production department was 12,000 square feet. So that was actually more than what we expected. So we had an additional cost spending in terms of efficiency wise, right? So we have an expense account debited, direct materials efficiency variance. So now we have two different accounts here. Material price variance is the first one. And then we have efficiency variance, the second one. So the second account would be debited for the differences, 4,000, which is additional spending then we budget it. All right, so what would be the third entry? We have all the material issues here. So the following slide will be on what? Labor, right? Materials and then labor on wages. So again, wages, we just talked about price differences and efficiency differences. So the first transaction here on wages, is it favorable or unfavorable? The first one. So there is a favorable one, and is it the upper one or the, the low one? Lower one's favorable, Con contra expense, right? So upper one, what does it tell us? that we're paying more and specifically each and every hour we paid 50 cents more, right? So we had wages payable is the actual number that we sent out as checks to workers. And the manufacturing wages was the standard price. Differences here, di direct labor price variance, we spent additionally more each hour 50 cents. Altogether, we had another account called direct labor price variance and we need to debit that as 1900. Okay, so again, here, once the workers start working on the, the production line for certain products, we will need to assign that cost, again, to work in process category. Remember this category, this account captures all the in production, in process costs. So this tells us what? It's favorable and specifically how much in favor? 2100 and that's because of the 200 hours cost saving, and each hour, based on standard price, we saved $10.50. So all together, we had 2100 as favorable. So you have another account called direct labor efficiency variance. And this variance here is favorable at $2,100, so we would credit it. Okay, so don't forget, debit side is expense, is additional cost occurrence. Credit side is cost saving, contra expense account. So we have materials, we have laborers, what else? Overhead. So overhead, overhead here is a little bit different because personally I think this sequence is actually a little messed up. But basically the first transaction here listed number five is the actual manufacturing cost that occurred which usually we only know this, remember, at the end of the year. So usually we would do a predetermined rate 
Remember, based on last year's experience, and as job occurs, we assign a portion to the jobs, then later we adjust the account. Okay, so number five, this entry here, given to you in the textbook, is recording the actual cost. So just make a note somewhere that this actual cost, you only know it at the end of the year, okay? So this is not estimation, this is, not, this is the actual cost. Right, so what is number six? Number six, work in process, been debited, manufacturing overhead credited. That's actually as the jobs occur when we assign materials to work in process, we assign labor to work in process, this is assigning manufacturing overhead to work in process. Okay, so this standard hours, 4,000 hours times the standard price, this was the original budgeted part, 20,000. And the upper part is the actual cost that occurred when you know at year end. So what does it tell you all together here? We actually cost more, 21300 and we only assigned to production work in process 20000 So we're missing 1300 here, okay? And that 1300 breaks down to what we just talked about, Variable overhead, fixed overhead, specifically, let me just jump to it, the very last transaction here captures that $1,300 differences. Okay, so that breaks down to these two charts that I just showed you earlier on standard spending variances for variable cost, efficiency variances, spending variance for fixed cost, volume variance for fixed overhead, so you see anything with a unfavorable is listed as what? As expense. Anything unfavorable is additional cost spending. Okay, so anything with a favorable here is listed on the credit side. And if you just add them up, you'll find the variances show between the actual and the part that we um, assigned. Basically, is the differences here. Okay, so you have materials differences, labor cost differences, Manufacturing overhead actual and assigned, and these differences here is captured in the very last transaction, which we have to allocate that additional 1300 So remember, that was because earlier we already assigned a portion, but in reality, we paid a total of 21300 uh, $21, yes. So you can think of it as earlier we just allocated 20000 We allocated two less. Seems like... We are allocating an additional 1300 So really, this is like the adjusting part that you learned earlier. It's just we didn't break it down into details. Okay, so the middle part here, you should know this by now. This is just assigning the remaining work in process into the jobs. This is nothing new here. It's just what you completed. You sent it to finished goods. And then when you sell it out, it becomes cost of goods sold. Okay, so really the focus is on the first six century and the very last one here. Right. I just have one more slide to show. This is just the T accounts, which I briefly went over over there. Okay. And this income statement is just putting together everything. We can go into more details, but I wouldn't focus too much on this, just to let you know where this really goes into. Okay, so this is the very last table. Don't panic too much on um, going over this. I wouldn't be testing you on doing this, but you have to know what this means. That basically just breaks down all the variances. Those variances, think of them as additional expenses. So you just summarize all the variances here. If it's additional cost, you put a minus bracket around it. If it's, I'm sorry, if it's saving, you put a bracket around it. So it's actually cost saving. Otherwise, it's considered additional expenses.